Alright, welcome back. Since the last video, I've been doing a lot of work on our procedural world generation, especially to get procedural caves into our voxel landscape. It's definitely taken quite a few attempts to get something working that I like, but I think what I've managed to get working now is going to be a really good base for what caves will become. I can now spawn them at runtime using PCG, similar to how I spawn all the trees and grass. I'll show you the graph I use a little later in the video. Let's just go find a cave first. Alright, here's one. The caves themselves spawn with their own PCG graphs for ground cover, like this grass and bushes. Same for all the rocks, the mushroom trees, and the glowing clover and dangling bits. I add a lot of noise to the stamp I use to subtract from the voxel landscape. The stamp itself is basically a sphere, but applying Perlin noise to that makes it look more like some sort of mushed up sphere, and I think this helps make the caves have a lot more variety to their shape. In the beginning, they actually looked like big empty toilet rolls. They were very round and very straight. What we've got now looks pretty good though. Let's just go explore this one first. It doesn't seem to have much branching going on yet. Although, you know, I think this section is actually one of the smaller branches, but it's so close to the main branch that it just sort of becomes part of it. But that's cool, makes it a bit more random. One of the next things I want to add is water bodies in the caves. I think it would be cool to have little shallow bodies of water, just to give it some more variety. Maybe spawn fish, eels, or whatever other amphibious cave creatures are going to live inside these places. I tried not to make them too dark by using the flowing elements, but you can see it's still a bit tricky to see some areas. So this looks like it's actually a pretty small cave. Let's go find another one. Okay, cave number two. It looks like this one has a much bigger entrance. and maybe a smaller entrance off to the side there. Just a dead end. I just added this teleport to help with getting around while I'm developing things, but I actually find it quite fun. It was when I first added caves, I found that I wanted a much quicker way to get around to help locate them. And yeah, it's pretty handy. Let's check out the main cave. I think another thing I want to do is add a few different cave biomes. At the moment, they do all just share this same style, but I think have a few variations would be good too. Yeah, the tunnels in this one are much bigger than the last. Alright, let me show you how I made them. Okay, so we can break it down into four steps. First, we just sample the voxel landscape. We use a really low points per square meter so that our caves are somewhat sparse. I also apply an offset to make sure they tend to spawn below the landscape. Basically, this just makes sure part of the caves will be 2000 units underground. From my testing, that seems to give a good mix of entrances, tunnels and cave ceiling holes. If we just debug this and zoom out, we can see where the samples points should try to create the cave entrances. Let's do this pink one, it's more obvious. There. So basically every one of these pink spheres could be a potential cave system. There's a good amount of them around to be interesting and potentially combine with each other. If we go in and take a look, we can see how they sit under the voxel landscape.
The next part is actually making some tunnels from wherever we decided an entrance should go. That part is pretty easy. Essentially, we just create a points grid, a pretty big one, and then copy those points to every entrance point. If we go in and look at that, you can see these debug rectangles. Basically, what we'll try and do next is pathfind our way through these grids to come up with a random path to make our tunnels. You can sort of see how these caves are pathing through their points grids. So yeah, the pathfinding was also pretty easy. I found a really helpful video from Procedural Minds. I'll link it in the comments. But the way he used pathfinding in that video is basically what I've done here for the main cave path. If you watch his video, he'll explain it in so much more detail. But basically, we're just taking the first point from our grid and the last and then trying to path between the two. We do use these density and fitness score options along with some random noise to help prevent the path between these points from being too straight. I also just apply some random transforms to the path to help make the tunnels less spherical and help give them a more interesting shape. From there, I do create two more paths, one which will branch directly off the main path and a second one, which can technically go from any two points in the grid. This gives us three paths in total, which can intersect or join in many different ways. Then finally, all we do is spawn our voxel stamp along these paths. The stamp is basically just a noisy sphere, set to subtract from the landscape. It's a mess. I need to clean this up at some point. But for now, it works well. So yeah, each path gets output as a spline, and then we just spawn the voxel stamp along those splines, one for each path. I'll turn off the stamps and just show you the debug paths. It makes it easier to visualize the three tunnels. Now we can see the main tunnel is the red, the secondary tunnel the blue, and the third, technically disconnected tunnel, is the green one. In this system, they're all sort of converging along a similar path, so that would probably give some really wide tunnels. Down the end, the red and green do split. In this one here, the green one is branching off the main red tunnel. I think the end result looks quite good in game. The tunnels are varied enough, I just need to add some biomes to them, maybe some water. I hope you found this interesting or helpful. I might do a follow up video on caves once I get some of those extra features in. But thanks for watching, and here's one more cave before we wrap up. See you next time.